Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections and today I just wanted to film uh, one of my 2019 smart home tours and this is pretty much everything I want to show you guys pretty much everything that I've done to my home over the last uh, probably year or so maybe two years maybe a year um, and just to give you guys some inspiration some ideas if you're looking to get involved and in, uh, maybe bringing in some cool tech into your home this will give you a lot of different options a lot of different ideas that you might be able to integrate into your own home so you ready here we go I'm gonna bring you on in so coming right up to the front door here uh, you'll notice we have a or I have a keyed uh, deadbolt entry by Quickset, and this is actually a um, obviously a keypad deadbolt that allows you to use your cell phone via um, opening up the front door via uh, Samsung SmartThings which communicates with this device uh, through the Z-Wave protocol. Uh, so it's great because I can go out, take a walk, go on a run. If I want to leave my keys and cell phone in the home, I can do so and I can still get entry into the house. I can also set up different users so it's a great way to allow different people in your house and you can lock out users, you have vacation modes. Um, it's a great device also to monitor your front door and know, hey, did I lock the house? If I didn't, you can do it remotely. So pretty cool. Then of course over here you have a a smart peephole and you just basically drill a hole in the door you mount this inside the uh, through the door and on the opposite side there is a four inch LCD screen so if somebody comes up rings the doorbell it acts just like a surveillance camera with motion detection infrared and two-way audio so if you come over here you ring that it'll actually ring my cell phone and show up on the opposite side of the door so I'm not gonna show you that right now because I've already done a video review on all these uh, so I'm not going to demonstrate them all. I'm just going to just kind of tell you guys what I have. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I'll be more than happy to help you out. So there's the screen on the opposite side of the door. And you get about a good over a good month of um, battery life out of this. And it comes with a really long power cord. I happen to have an outlet right down over here. So when I need to charge it, I just pull out the power cord, hook it up, let it charge, and we're good to go. Uh, here's the opposite side of the Z-Wave deadbolt. Uh, you get about a year of battery life with Z-Wave uh, with a Z-Wave deadbolt, which is great because you don't have to worry about charging it. And Z-Wave is just another great protocol to get another device off your network. So the more devices you put on your Wi-Fi network, the more of a strain and the more access points you need to have. Which I've explained all that in another video. So I was gonna give you guys just the rundown. And like I said, I'm not gonna go in depth. I'm gonna tell you guys what I have. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. So coming up the stairs, I put in an LED RGB, uh, uh, just a very inexpensive uh, strip lighting off eBay. This has an infrared controller. If you don't know anything about the controllers, again, drop me a comment. I'll tell you all about them. Uh, coming into the living room here, well, you know, my living room's not really huge. It just gives me enough room for a chair, a sofa love. And what I wanted to do in this living room was make it very, very comfortable. And I love audio. I love co um, audio, video, and components. But I don't really want to see those things. So I really try to tuck things away where the tech is in the room, but it doesn't. it's not overwhelming. You don't look at, walk in here and think a gamer lives here. You know what I mean? Nothing wrong with that. It's just not really my style. I like to keep things kind of classy looking. Again, that is subjective. Everybody has different tastes. This is mine. This is what I like. Um... You know, naturally, I did, oh, I did all these curtains myself and, and uh, you know, decided how to hang them. I, I basically gutted this entire place before I moved in. I chose the carpet, the color, the furniture, the, the paint color. Uh, everything in here is just a, a, a reflection of my taste and my personality. So coming on over to the natural living room here, you'll notice the... the Biggest thing in the room is actually this Vizio 70 inch smart TV. Um, basically I wall mounted that, I put in the outlets in order to tap into the lower outlets and I add an outlet behind the TV. And you might be asking, why do you have two TVs in your living room? Well, when I moved in, uh, Naturally, you know, there was no TVs in here and I didn't want to wall mount the TV at the time because I wanted to use all my components for my 5.1 system. I'm up there. I have some very, very old uh, Kenwood components. Uh, these things are timeless. They're one of the best uh, receivers and 5.1 Dolby Digital uh, receivers in its day uh, and they still work great. I got these back in 96. I love the way they look. They're all stainless steel, very sleek. Uh, everything's controlled by the remote, which is actually very very dated uh, but that's what it looks like it's in the glow with a cursor uh, it does what it does it does it well and it sounds great I have a just a DVD player up there and a five disc changer I don't use this TV since I started streaming so much I really don't use DVDs at all anymore but if I want to I still have the option to do so uh, this is a 48 Roku TV. Uh, it allows me to you know this is the primary TV in the room and what's nice about this is when you close these doors Pretty much the entire entertainment system is hidden. You don't really even know it's there. Uh, and again, that was really nice before, you know, uh, again, before I got the 70 inch TV, which is a big focal point in the room now. But, and I'll tell you why I did what I did on that uh, as soon as I, you know, show you that. 
So again, you have a full 5.1 system here. I ran all the lines before I, when everything was out, the fireplace is out. Uh, me and my dad redid, or actually my dad redid uh, the entire marble around this, did a great job on it. And then I sprayed with high temperature paint. The fireplace gave it an updated look. Again, this place is pretty bad when I bought it, but I put a lot of time and, and heart into it. And uh, it turned out pretty nice. I, I love it, I love home. Uh, on the wall there, we have Acoustic Research flat panel stainless steel speakers. Uh, they're perfectly uh, spaced for the love seat to be your listening position or your sweet spot. Uh, it sounds great, it gets loud. Uh, hidden in the corner, we have a Acoustic Research 10-inch uh, subwoofer, powered sub with the lines already ran through the walls, everything. Uh, after the fact, it would have been a hard thing to do when the place is completely finished like it is now. So I'm glad I did it before all the furniture was in, the carpet was in, uh, it turned out nice. So again, this was the primary TV until I decided, hey, you know what? I really sit down here a lot more than I used to. I want to get something bigger. And I wanted something that when you know friends and family came over, we can really have a real huge cinema experience down here and for the distance here this tv is huge for the room but you know we desensitize and now it doesn't really even feel that big but again it is a 70 um, i do have underneath that sponsored by vizio i think vizio makes the best sounding sound bars available for the money uh i can start the invicta of sound bars you get a great bang for your buck this is their new dolby atmos system it's phenomenal sounding i love it um, and I tried a lot of different sound bars before I settled on Vizio, and they ultimately came, uh, approached me because I had purchased one of their just 5.1 sound bars, and I loved it so much I gave it a great review, and they were like, hey, would you like to try our new one? So they went ahead and sent me that, and it's phenomenal. So hidden behind the TV is a NVIDIA Shield, and that's what I use as my Android box. It's the, the best... Uh, uh, Android box you can get on the market. Uh, it's fast, it's great, it works wonderfully, there's no lag. And I use Kodi and I use that to stream all my media directly from my network server upstairs. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, right now we just have some ambient you know, screensaver on YouTube I just put on for the video. Uh, and again, that is a 70 inch LED TV, NVIDIA Shield with a the remote that comes with it is actually, uh, I believe it's Bluetooth, but I also use an Amazon Bluetooth remote, which is paired with that device. So you can keep that thing hidden behind the TV. It's wall mounted. You don't even know it's there. And I can stream pretty much every uh, app you can think of, HBO Go, Netflix, Kodi, whatever you want to use, I basically stream to this TV. And then the sound bar is pretty well hidden. All the wires are uh, tucked in behind the TV. You really don't see anything but the TV and the bar, with the exception of there's one little cable running down to the sound bar. I didn't feel like bust, busted a hole in the wall running that, so I just used a little bit of loom, painted it, and it's pretty, it's pretty discreet. So with this comes with a uh, wireless uh, subwoofer, which is also in the corner back here. And then what wired to that subwoofer is some rear surrounds. So you don't get a huge rear sound stage, but enough to let you know, hey, you know, you're getting that rear surround. And what's great about it is that you don't even know they're there. It's very hidden. You don't really know that there's a surround system in this room, or two surround systems in the room. And over here behind the curtain, there is uh, the second speaker for that rear surround right over here behind the sheer curtain. Tucked away, hidden. Uh, you really have to look for it to know it's there. Again, with the exception of, you know, you can't really hide a 70-inch TV, but, you know, when it's off, even when it's on, it's pretty discreet. It's kind of camouflaged, you know, with the rest of the art I have on the wall, uh, and I think it looks great. Um, as far as other smart home tech items, uh, in the ceilings here, I have two LifeX bulbs. And of course, I have one LifeX bulb uh, in the fixture above the front door. So those are all controlled via uh, Wi-Fi inside or out to the network. Uh, I have a Google Home. This is with a battery base on it by 97. I can unplug that, take it anywhere I want around the house. Uh, wherever I can get Wi-Fi in the backyard, I can bring that, move it around, and I have audio and voice control uh, wherever I go with it. In this lamp, and uh, these two lamps are some Singlet. Uh, Z-Wave LED bulbs, so those are actually set up to be voice control as well, so I can use the app or my voice to turn those on or off. And then hidden in the tree is a Broadlink Universal Wi-Fi Smart Remote Control that allows me to control RF devices such as the outdoor Costco Fight Electric uh, str uh, LED string lights I have set up. I can turn those on or off remotely from inside or outside the network. And with this, this will allow me, if I want to, to set a macro, and I can basically say, you know, I won't say the keyword, uh, whether it be the Amazon or Google product. I can say movie time, and it'll dim the lights down, turn on the TV, turn on the sound bar, and it's ready to go. I don't use it all that much, but it was just something I wanted to have just for the hell of it. Um, in the room here, I have a couple security cameras, one mounted in the tree there. It's kind of discreet. And over here, over on my wine bar, I have a couple of LED bulbs. 
a lamp, and a Zomato pan tilt camera. This allows me to monitor the room. has uh, voice activation. It, it tells me if there's any kind of movement. And I can pan and tilt that to check out the entire living room. So peace of mind having that. And then this wine bar is uh, hooked up to a Sonoff smart plug, so I can turn that on or off remotely again. And from now on, I'm not gonna say with my phone from inside or outside network. I'm just gonna say, when I refer to something as a smart switch or bulb, assume that, I want you guys to assume that it can be turned on from inside or outside the network with my phone or with the Google or Amazon assistance. So coming on over to the dry bar that I put in, I put in an LED strip light. This is RF controlled and Again, I have mounted up in here two smart bulbs mounted to the ceiling and a halogen light. And there is a sawn off switch that I can actually turn that on or off. Um, again, it's a smart one, so you can do it remotely. And then there's two uh, Bluetooth uh, bulbs by Flux. And these are smart bulbs that are controlled via Bluetooth. So I've added those with uh, some ceramic um, kind of surface mount, uh, not cans, they're uh, just light sockets. They're hidden. And so you get that nice ambient light over the bar. You can change the color to whatever you want. Uh, the only thing you can't do with those is turn them on or off from outside the network. So I just kind of leave them on. It gives a nice glow. I change the color with my phone if I want to do it. If I don't, I just leave it mainly blue. Uh, coming over to the what I call kind of the command center, I have a wall-mounted or an in-wall-mounted um, Amazon Echo. Echo Dot, and then I have over here a an iWall dock mount, which allows you to mount an iPad inside the wall. Uh, it charges it at the same time, and of course a Lyric T5 smart thermostat. So again, this is kind of like the command center. Uh, you can see right now the upstairs light is not functional, so I have to reboot that light. Uh, when you start to get a lot of devices on the network like I have, I have like over 70 or 80 devices. Uh, sometimes you just get ones that just want to be rebooted. Sometimes I turn off the power to the whole house and reset the whole house. Uh, once a month, just give everything a nice fresh reboot, just like you do with your cell phone. Um, so this is cool. You can go over here if I want to turn the lights on or off. I can access any of the apps. I can view my security cameras from here if I want to with the Zomato app. Uh, pretty much anything you do on a tablet, whatever app's available. Now it's just something that's in the wall and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and the problem with this is I don't ever, I never really use the iPad all that much anymore. And you know how it is. You leave them sitting around long enough, the battery dies, and now you know you have to pay to have it replaced iPads are expensive, so I wanted something that was going to keep it constantly charged and be able to allow me to use it for something. And so that was a great product by, uh, by uh, again, by the, uh, what the hell is the company? The Wall Doc, iWall Doc. And this is a company by Mount Genie who makes this in-wall mount. Um, some of you, if you're uh, going to ask me about power, how I powered them, just drop me a comment. I'll explain it. Uh, coming on over into the kitchen here, excuse my cooler. It's my Friday to go off work. I have in this light fixture right here a... Uh, a LifeX smart bulb, and I'm going to, so just mute your computer for a second, I am gonna turn that one on. Hey Google, turn on the kitchen light. We so, on the and there you go. So one of the many voice controlled lights in the house. Uh, coming over to the kitchen here, I just have a infrared controller with a inexpensive RGB light strip that I got off eBay. Um, like I said, I love the color blue, so just kinda that's what I mainly keep it on. But if I want to, you know, if I'm going to crank up some music, have some friends over, I can make these, uh, you know, flash and change color and go with the music. Uh, if I ever use it more, I'll just add a Wi-Fi controller so I don't have to use the remote. Uh, but it's not something I really, you know, need to do at this point. Um, underneath the kitchen cabinets, and I can't show you this because the batteries are all dead, I just have some stick-on RGB LED uh, three AAA batteries power this. comes with a remote, and it gives me some ambient light underneath the counters. This one, I just have to remount this. The sticky tape kind of got a little bit oily, so uh, that's on the list. And just a standard kitchen, you know, uh, nothing too out of the order, nothing too crazy. I do have to redo the countertops. Uh, it's the one thing left in the house to do. I'm going to change it to a nice marble, which will match the fireplace. So that's on the list to do. Um, real quick, I want to take you guys outside. And, and again, I know I'm going through this pretty fast, so if a, you guys have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I apologize for this time of year. I can't help it. It's uh, winter time. Everything's dreary. And so, I got kind of stuff stored away. In the summertime, this is absolutely beautiful. Everything's in bloom. Everything's green. Um, I have to plant a few things coming up this year. So, again, excuse the mess. I have a master-built smoker that is just tucked away because I've been using it. And then over here, I have some lights in the trees. I have lights going up the birch tree. And I have some outdoor LED string lights. And so one of these is the Feet Fight Electric ones. These allow you to go RGB. And of course you have some Sonoff plugs and the actual control box for those mounted in the corner there. So I can turn these on or off again remotely from inside or outside the network.
Uh, coming on over to the backyard, I got some fence mounted uh, imitation flame LEDs. If you haven't seen my video on these, check them out. They actually look like a real flame. I have some security lights on the back of the fence there. And I have some lights going across the patio. My ponds, of course, which are all on voice control as well. So in the summertime, if I want to go ahead and turn these on or off at night, let's say I keep them on, I keep basically the ponds off at night because it attracts raccoons. Uh, but let's say at night, you know, it's my vacation or I want to come out to the hot tub. I want that ambient noise of the ponds. I can say, you know, hey, and you know, the voice word for the Amazon Assistant or Google, activate the ponds and these will turn on and so will the waterfall. Um, in those back uh, cans on the fence right there, those are also uh, controlled with a an outdoor uh, smart switch, allows me to control those as well. And those I have some singlet power failure, I think they're singlet, power failure LED bulbs. So those have a three hour charge in them. If the power were to go out right now, uh, let's say, well, if they were on, at night those are always on. So if the power were to fail, those will run for three hours on an internal battery. So there's always going to be security lighting back here. And of course, my newest addition uh, to the backyard is my hot tub. This is an Aquaterra. Uh, you have an uh, RGB bulb on the inside. Check out my video on this if you haven't seen it. And of course, this awesome outdoor TV box by the TV Shield with a basic uh, LED TV on the inside. Again, all stream, stream ready. I have a Chromecast hooked up to this. Uh, network ready, I can watch whatever I want, stream whatever I want when I'm in the hot tub. So absolutely cool. Uh, and if I bring the Google Home out here, I can do that with my voice. You're not actually touching the remote or touching anything electrical. Um, come up here, I've added an outdoor uh, Wavelink outdoor uh, access point. So this feeds my whole backyard with a separate SSID for all the network devices back here. And of course, an outdoor solar driven battery powered or battery backed up uh, outdoor real link security camera. So that monitors my whole backyard. Um, coming up to the top of the house, I have a security camera up there, hardwired into the network, and then one down beneath here. So all these right now are recording me. They're sending alerts to my phone, and it gives you that peace of mind knowing that you know all your property is secured and being recorded. And this is beautiful in the summertime. I'll come back and do a video on this in the summertime. So let me go ahead and take you guys on over to the garage. The garage is pretty basic and again in the summertime I will re-record this video and show you guys everything all its bloom and beauty uh, but right now just kinda, we're just doing the winter tour. <laughs> so come on over to, oh I almost forgot to mention this, this is an iView uh, RoboVac so that allows me to control that remotely. Again, it's Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, you don't really have to use it outside the network, but uh, I guess if you live in the kind of home where maybe you had all hardwood, uh, you'd want to maybe vacuum when you're away and monitor on the security cam. I'm not sure, but I generally just use it for the kitchen. Uh, just words of the wise, if you're going to get a smart vac, I have a high pile carpet, and so this does not work on carpet like mine. So unfortunately, I only use it for the kitchen, but it was a sponsorship deal from iView. Uh, fortunate enough to have it. So I do use it in the kitchen. It mops the floor. Uh, it does a really great job. It's a great vac. It's only 200 bucks. Um, I have two switches in this room. I kept two different devices. Uh, these track lights above us here, and then the track lighting in the kitchen, just on your standard dimmer, just in the event that I have a network problem, something's going on, I can still turn the lights without any kind of issue. And then going over to the garage, and this is just not too much in here, but coming on over inside my, kind of my weapons wall, this is not my real weapons, these are like my pellet guns, and my bows, my crossbow, my motorcycle helmets, when I had a motorcycle, uh, I have an LED strip light, I'll put, again, links will be in the description for all these, because I kind of forget while I'm doing this video on all the brand names, I have so many different devices, and work with so many different companies, uh, I kind of forget sometimes. So this is Wi-Fi enabled. I can change the color. I just need to get an extension on it so I can add the lighting all the way to the very end. Uh, one of the best LED strip lights that I found and one of the best values. Um, over here, I have a Samsung TV mounted in here. In the event that I'm working out here, I can turn on the TV. I don't have a Chromecast on it yet. It is on the list to get. And then just a simple radio and D uh, CD player. And then a security camera monitoring the garage as well. And naturally, that's smart. I had my door unlocked for 24 hours. That's never happened ever. <laughs> Good thing I caught that. <laughs> Good thing nobody else caught that. And then come on over to uh, the garage door. This is a uh, MyQ Smart Universe Remote for the garage door. Again, I can monitor the door, know whether it's open or closed. And if I, by some chance, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to close the door, I can close it remotely via their app. So that's about it for the smart garage. I will do more in there at a later date, but you know, uh, that's what I get you get for now. So I'm gonna take you guys upstairs now. 
Where are we at here? 19 minutes? Yeah, all right. So come on upstairs here. We have uh, just a couple lamps here. I have a couple power failure bulbs around the house. So this lamp right here, in the event of a power failure, I can still turn that on to run for three hours on battery life. It'll work with the existing switch. Pretty cool how the power, function, the power failure bulbs work. Uh, it monitors the circuit somehow, and obviously the, the lamp is off right now. And I can turn it on with the switch, obviously, here. Turn it on, it's a regular, regular, bulb, regular, regular lamp. But right now, if we were sitting here and the power went out, that lamp would go into battery power mode, and I could still go ahead and turn it off. Uh, lamp in the window is running off a Sonoff smart plug, um, again on a timer. Uh, my chandelier that's ran off a smart plug as well, all voice control. Lifex bulb inside this uh, fixture, which I'm going to turn off and power cycle that because it needs to reconnect anyway. And next to that we have a Ubiquiti uh, access point. If you don't know anything about Ubiquiti, again, check out my other videos. Uh, one of the best access points you can get if you have a lot of smart home tech. Coming into the bedroom, um, as they say, where the magic happens. I know it's really cheesy, but <laughs> anyway. Um, not too much in here as far as uh, smart tech. LifeX bulbs in the lamps along the bedside. Uh, a Wi-Fi enabled LED strip on the bedside across the headboard. Uh, it's just stuck right on there, double stick tape, just like in the kitchen. Gives me a nice ambient feel. And then of course my fireplace hooked up to a smart plug. I can control that via voice. My ceiling fan is on a smart plug that can be controlled again inside or outside the network. Uh, over here, a Google Home, an Amazon Echo Dot, which is in a, another product by 97. This is a, a upgraded speaker and battery base. So this can be unplugged and moved around the house. It'll run for eight hours. And then I had this piece of art and I tucked uh, in between the glass and an RGB Wi-Fi enabled LED strip. Gives kind of a cool glow of the room. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Security camera in this room as well. We have a this device. I don't know if you can see. This is an X10 pyramid. What that does is because all my components for the surround system in here and the TV and the game system, which I'll show you guys right over here. If you guys can see that there. This is where I have my network printer, my network fax, my scanner. Um, you know, my uh, one of my safes, uh, all the different components I have for the system, the 5.1 Dolby Digital System, all that stuff gets a RF signal from that pyramid. So while I'm lying in bed, if I want to turn up the volume for something inside the closet, I can basically just point the device, point the remote at that pyramid. What it does is takes the infrared signal, transmits it into an RF signal, and then the repeater picks that signal up, which is right here, it's called the power mid, and then bounces that off the dresser into the components. Uh, works pretty well. It would work better if I had that device over over on top of the dresser, but I'll probably have to put it in a box eventually on the back side of this wall, and I'll just mount it right over here. It'll work better then. Uh, you know, get some of the old school game systems. I don't really game too much. Uh, so, I mean, they're there, and, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes I'll play the Xbox 360, uh, but, you know, they're there. And so, just coming on outside here, I have this I have to hardwire in. This is a cool mount I got from a guy off Etsy. Again, I did a review on this as well. I will compile all the links to this video for these products in the description uh, where you get more information. But uh, I kind of forget the name offhand, but it just wall mounts. Not as slick as the iWall dock, but it allows you to wall mount a, uh, a fire tab. It even has them for different... Uh, devices. Eventually, this will be hardwired. We'll always always be powered on. And again, it's another command center for you to change the lights and do whatever if you don't have your phone on you. Uh, over here, right at this switch, this is a Z-Wave smart switch that allows me to control these LED bulbs in this fixture again remotely and set timers and all that stuff. In the bathroom, I have a electric fireplace which I need to wire in with a GFCI plug. Uh, but for now, I'll just turn it on. So just standard jet tub. And then inside the fixture area that I have to do something a little different. I just have a smart bulb in there and then a, a Z-Wave um, floodlight. So again, that's all Wi-Fi enabled. Or now it is Wi-Fi enabled through Z-Wave, through Samsung Smart Thing. So again, any questions, let me know. Again, Z-Wave switch allows you just to wall mount the switch and control Z-Wave products when you program. So I can go ahead and press one button for full bright, the other button for dim, whoops, for dim, and then press it again for off. So pretty cool. And other than that, that's about it for the bedroom. Other than the FUBA environment monitor, this tracks, uh, again, remotely with Wi-Fi, the air quality in the room. It will give me notifications. 
it'll actually turn on the fan automatically with a macro that I've set. In the event that the room gets too hot, it'll turn on the fan to circulate. You can do all kinds of things with this device in IFTTT. Uh, really cool, you can integrate different products. Uh, coming on over to this lamp, I have a power failure bulb. Uh, here I have a couple uh, Bluetooth enabled candelas. Uh, these are pretty cool, it's by Yee Light, and that's the name of the company who makes that garage LED strip now that I remember. And these are probably dead right now, I have to power, you have to charge them, but they have a really great ambient glow. So I'll charge them up, the weekends I'll put them in the fixtures and make the room just have this really cool candle glow. Um, on the dresser, this is how I, I believe I don't get sick very often, and this I believe is why. This is an awesome device by Aeroside, uh, NASA technology, kills viruses, bacteria, mold. Uh, amazing air filter since I had this. I haven't even had the common cold, to be honest with you. I've had it for well over a year. It's the only thing I've changed, and I tell you, I, I swear by it. And then IT Vanilla sent me a couple there. Um, these are just standard HEPA filters, and I just put them here temporarily. I'll probably leave them there for now, but uh, I have two of them running. It really makes the room very clean, gets the dust out of the air. Um, and I have them uh, set up with a RGB smart plug in the event that I want to kill power to them. I can for whatever reason. Uh, for the bed, I have... I don't know if you can see this right there. I have to re-wall mount this, but uh, that's a controller for a dual zone heated mattress pad so I can heat up the bed, get it really warm and toasty. And then underneath here, underneath the bed, this was sent as sponsorship as part of a deal between me and BedJet. And again, I'm not going to go into detail about this, but uh, what this does is basically blows air directly underneath the, uh, the fitted sheet. It can be hot or cold, and it just keeps you dry. You can be super warm and not sweating. It is like... When I first heard that they were going to send me one, I was like, eh, I don't know if I would use that. But I'm telling you, since having it, get one, guys, if you want to be comfortable in bed. Uh, they're a little pricey, like $300, $400, but it is totally worth it. It's way better than an electric mattress pad because you don't sweat like you do. You know, if you, get, you can be 104 degrees with this thing, super uh, toasty under the covers, and you're just not sweating because that air is just moving. So it's amazing. It's all different kinds of settings you can do with it, and it's controlled via Bluetooth from your smartphone. So that's really about it for my bedroom. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, naturally, the biggest thing on the wall here. 55-inch uh, Vizio Smart TV, just like the one downstairs, with a in-wall 5.1 Dolby Digital painted to match uh, the walls. Uh, naturally, you have your rear surrounds back there. And then in the wall, they have two six and a half and a tweeter. Uh, really inexpensive. I'll put links for all this stuff again. I mean, if you're a little handy, you have to run the wires, drop lines down. It was a little bit of a task, but after wiring that in, again, you have a full-blown 5.1 Dolby Digital system in this room, two of them, because that other soundbar I told you about is mounted on top of the TV uh, with a hidden subwoofer underneath the bed, and there's a hidden subwoofer behind that chair. So really, you wouldn't think this room has all the audio components that it has, but this room just gets loud. I mean, watching a movie, it's awesome. Super comfortable in bed. And then moving on over to the office here. This is where I you know, do all my filming for my YouTube channel, I do all my work, um, and where I hang out the most. Uh, this is my office. So over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lamps in this room. Uh, the ones that you see with color are different bulbs, some by iView, some by my favorite inexpensive bulb by Lohas. Uh, again, all RGB, all Wi-Fi enabled, uh, all controllable throughout the, you know, through your network. And you know, just a leather sofa or leather love seat, uh, security camera in here, electric fireplace that is again hooked up to a smart plug. You can turn that on or off, and then of course we have this awesome lamp. I forget the company, but all LED up fire and a down fire. Really Art Deco. Uh, really gets bright. And I, again, another product I would never have thought about buying. They sent it. I absolutely love it. It works great in the room. I kind of did this beige, gray, and white theme. Uh, just wall mounted to the wall here. I have just a little 32 inch TV. My parents, I traded them. I gave them a 42 plasma. I didn't use any more. I couldn't use it because I don't, I don't use any analog stuff anymore. But they have Comcast and they went ahead and, or Xfinity and they went ahead and just hooked it up with one of their converters and they love it. So I took their TV for the bedroom and it works perfectly on this wall. I could use it with, uh, I have Chromecast hooked up to it. I can cast, you know, with all different apps or directly from the computer. Uh, the shower, since we get this out of the way here, not too much to write home about in the shower. It's a basic. Shower, of course, um, no Wi-Fi tech in here, except for a Z-Wave bulb. So that one is controlled remotely. And the idea with the remote stuff is that in the event that I'm not home and something happens, I can really light this house up. I mean, I can really make it secure. And again, it's just peace of mind knowing I can control everything with my voice and I can track everything away from home, which is great. 
Uh, wall mounted or ceiling mounted is a another wall mount uh, by uh, man, where is it? Da, uh, mount Genie, and that's a Google uh, Home Mini. So that's great. Ceiling mounting these things is absolutely fantastic. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, it has the best audio and it really picks up. Uh, it really makes those the, those far field field uh, microphones in these things work even better than just having it on your coffee table. So eventually I'm add a few more of those throughout the house. Uh, just haven't got around to it. And then as far as the desk, this is the desk I got back in like, man, like 1999. Uh, this was from Ikea. You can't get this anymore. Uh, all glass and stainless, or all glass and silver metal. Uh, I love this desk. I've mounted uh, to the side of the bracket here, to the frame, a uh, quad monitor mount, which I'm just using for two. Still a little bit of a sword display to kind of hide the mount a little bit there, because it is, I mean, it's hard to hide. It's huge. But I don't think it looks really horrible. I think it looks pretty good. And then come on over to the desk, of course. Uh, nothing really crazy here. I have this amazing soundbar, though. This is a gaming soundbar by, uh, by Creative. If you haven't checked out Creative's uh, soundbars, I tell you, I tell anybody, if you could fit a soundbar at your desk, get that be be before you go get a couple speakers. This thing gets insanely loud. It's so loud you can use this as a soundbar for a TV. And it's got RGB lighting underneath it here, which... Actually, I can't turn on at the moment, but uh, it's got RGB, all different kind of sound profiles, a subwoofer that, although it looks really cheesy, just hammers. Uh, I just have a standard prefab uh, HP computer. It's a, it's a, I believe it's an eight core. Uh, works for what I do. I'm not a gamer, so uh, standard Logitech mouse and wireless keyboard, and then two 32 inch curved Scepter monitors. I love these monitors. I used to have uh, a configuration of two 22s and three 19s. Uh, I I bit the bullet. I said, you know what? I'm just going to get something new. And I'm so glad I got these. They are phenomenal. And then last but not least, coming on over to the desk here, I have a smart Wi-Fi enabled Alexa. You can say that in here because she's not in here. But that one actually has Alexa built in. So if I want to activate her, I press a button and I can use that as voice control as well. Uh, then, of course, we have an ASUS access point, which I have hooked up there. I, I'm using it as kind of a network server. I have a Western Digital 4 terabyte MyBook running off that. And then a Finge box, what the Finge does, that little blue ring, that actually monitors the entire network. So I can see what's connected to my network. If I know, you know, if somebody, let's say I have some, I don't have anybody living with me right now, but let's say you have a girlfriend living with you, you can actually uh, put the MAC address of her phone in there as a recognized device. And whenever she gets home, you'd know. I know that sounds a little creepy. You don't have to do that, but these are different things. If you have a child, you can do that and get alerts and know when that person's come onto your network. And if you've had an intruder, if somebody were to access your network, it'll send you a push notification. So pretty cool way to monitor your network. And I know, sorry guys, a lot of watches here. This is from the 25 days of Invicta. I got to get these kind of boxed up. But I am going to re-review them again to have uh, you know a little bit more videos for the next coming year for these particular watches. So that's a whole different story. And then last but not least, I just want to show you guys the final portion of the smart home tech. And that is the network closet. And so what we have here, this monitor is off right now. I have a NVR, two NVRs for the security system or the cameras, uh, both 500 terabyte, hard, 500 gigabyte hard drives, two monitors, this one normally uh, monitors the, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the other NVR, and what I did was I was having issues with both devices having IP conflict, so I just disconnected one of the NVRs for now until I figure that out, but right now I have an eight channel NVR running, this is recording every camera in the house, uh, lots of going on, lots of stuff going on here. Just a air, uh, this is a fan blowing onto the NVR, just to kind of circulate the air. I have an UMA phone system, a Magic Jack phone system. These are all VoIP phones. Uh, I have a Echo Connect. This allows you to use UMA through your Alexis. So when somebody calls your UMA number, it'll ring throughout the entire Alexis, all the Alexis, and you can answer it from your Alexa. So you have basically a, a speakerphone throughout the house. And of course, my router, um, you know, all the other components that go along with the network, Samsung SmartThings Hub, and of course, another four terabyte network drive. And so whenever I want to stream any of my media, it comes from this, uh, this what we call server, or the other one in the bedroom. So I can select where I want to pull those files from. Works great. And, you know, there's more to it, but I'm just going to close it up for now. Uh, that's a whole different video. So guys, that's really about it. Um, I know that video was, we turned the camera back on me. I know that video was pretty long, and uh, what are we at, about 
35 minutes. But I hope I gave you just some ideas of what you could do in a smart home. I know this video was extremely, you guys know I record extremely uh, rough and raw and unedited. And I just wanted, this is what I would, how I would talk to somebody if one of my buddies came over and said, tell me about what you've done. And uh, this is how I share it. So I prefer to come across like this with you guys and just keep it really light and nonchalant. Uh, I hope you like some of the things I did to the house. If you don't, I really don't care. I like it. And, uh, you know, I hope I've inspired you a little bit. If you're looking at and getting involved in some smart home tech and thinking about some of the different cool devices they have out there, uh, I think I have a lot of them as not much many other devices you can really add to your home uh, other than the stuff I have. Um, I'm always looking for new new tech. It gets hard to find new devices because everybody and their brother makes a smart bulb. Everybody makes all these different devices now. Uh, so a lot of it gets kind of redundant. But uh, one other thing I failed to mention that any of the Google products you can stream with your voice. And so what I can do is I can actually play music uh, from, I can voice control music, whether I could say, hey, you know, play this at the the bedroom display, the bedroom soundbar, um, all Google Homes, uh, the Office TV. I could basically have everything that's Chromecast enabled in the house play at the same time with the same media source. So it's really like having, you know, a whole speaker system throughout the house. Uh, pretty amazing products, pretty amazing time, guys. I get pretty excited with this stuff. I think it's really cool, although it does get complicated sometimes, and I've I made a few videos before where it's like, dude, it's almost like this stuff complicates your life instead of making it easier, but it really does. It's, it's got a cool factor. I love the ability to be able to control things, but, you know, when you have this many products, there are, you know, I'm not a net network engineer, so maybe if I was, maybe things would be a little bit smoother, but since adding the, um, the access point, the uh, Ubiquity, I'll probably add a second at a later date to kind of mesh them and take a little bit of load off that one. But 80 devices with the problems that I have, I don't have too many. Uh, before I added those devices and was using my Asus AC3200 for all devices, that thing is, it works fine for a few devices that I have hooked up to it. I mainly just use it as a router now and not as an access point. So, you know, it is what it is. So guys, again, uh, thank you for spending time with me and coming to my home and checking out uh, all the different... <laughs> the craziness of smart home tech that I have. Uh, again, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. As always, if you have any questions, I'm here to help. I know there was a lot to take in, but let me know if you have any questions. And again, all the links to stuff will be in the description. And if I forget one, please remind me. All right, guys, have a great evening. Time to get my beer on. Bye.